papel. Okay. And the last thing we were seeing, we were looking at uh, designing T error correcting. T error correcting BCH codes. Okay, so this is what we saw in the last class. Okay, so, so I'm just rephrasing it differently. In the last class, I said you're going to look at uh, block length being. Okay. Am I having some real difficulty here? Okay, oh, so I was saying n is going to be 2 power m minus 1. You have to select some m, okay? Depending on what n you want, you would select some m and then you would design so that the minimum distance is guaranteed to be 2t plus 1. I've said equal to 2t plus 1. What can you actually guarantee? greater than or equal to 2t plus 1 and they said in most cases of interest you would get d equals 2t plus 1 and what did we say k is going to be again we had a bound which was greater than or equal to and as I said in many cases it is going to be equal but I will simply say greater than or equal to here n minus mt right so I argued y from the parity check matrix you should get this okay so and what was our parity check matrix I want to remind you once again of what it was it is quite important okay so alpha alpha squared all the way to alpha power n minus 1 what is alpha now okay so in this whole thing alpha belonging to f2 m f2 power m is a primitive element okay so all these things are all these things we saw so on the previous class and the next second row was 1 alpha squared alpha squared squared so on till alpha squared raised to the power n minus 1. You went all the way down to d minus 1 rows. So until alpha power d minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1. Okay. So I am going to keep a copy of this because I will need it sometime. Okay. Okay, so that's my uh, parity check matrix. Okay, so towards the end of last class, I pointed out a couple of problems with this. Okay, the first problem is not knowing k exactly. Right, that was a bit of a problem, but we have a good bound and maybe we are happy with it. The second problem was the only way we know how to encode and decode is using the binary parity check matrix, which is not going to be very easy to implement when your blocking becomes very large. Okay, so those two are significant problems that we still haven't tackled. So if you remember. A little while back, a few lectures back, I was saying we will solve all those problems. We will solve first the problem of designing a parity check matrix with a specified minimum distance and then we will solve the problem of encoding and decoding efficiently. Okay, So both all those things, this, the, all, this, all those things can actually be solved using these BCH codes. Okay, So it is not that they cannot be solved but we have to look at it a little bit differently. Okay, So this is the construction which is good enough because we are able to guarantee the minimum distance but we do, but we have to understand the code better we have to understand the code words better in order to be able to simplify encoding and decoding further okay so so the first process in understanding is to so look try and prove a few properties for this code okay so some properties the first property which which I think is very clear and which I have assumed without proof even in the discussion without even bringing it up with you is first thing is BCH codes are linear okay so again by just by definition this is true right I mean you one, one doesn't have to worry too much about it right I only said or set of all vectors which satisfy HV transpose equals 0 if V1 satisfies V2 satisfies v1 plus v2 will also satisfy that equation. So it was very obvious, that doesn't really require proof, but, but still it's good to write down that property. Okay, BCH codes are linear. The second property, which is really the distinguishing property, which gives you all the simplifications you need, is the fact that BCH codes are cyclic. Okay, so it's a slightly non-trivial property. What do I mean by being cyclic? If I have 
okay v0 v1 vn minus 1 belongs to a bch code okay then if this belongs to the bch code then let's say uh, vn minus 1 v0 v1 so on till vn minus 2 which is actually what a right shift by right circular shift by one position also belongs to the bch code okay so that's 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 something that we that we can easily prove once again just based on the condition so what do i have to show to prove a statement like this yeah so i have to show that if the vector on the top v0 to vn minus 1 satisfies hv transpose equals 0 then the circularly shifted version will also satisfy the same set of equations okay so how do you go about proving that it's, it's very easy let's look at the i throw of h okay i throw of h is going to tell you v0 times 1 plus v1 times alpha power i plus v2 times alpha power i squared plus so on till v n minus 1 times alpha power i raised to the power n minus 1 is 0 okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this equation by alpha power i okay this entire equation you multiply by alpha power i okay so so you get the shift so you notice why i'm doing that so you get that shift very nicely so let me write that down with the shift v0 times alpha power i plus v1 times alpha power i squared plus so on till v n minus 2 times alpha power i to the power n minus 1 okay i'm going to get equal to 0 here and then i would get a term v n minus 1 times alpha power i whole thing raised to the power n okay so now there you see it becomes alpha power n okay what is alpha power n it's 1 okay right alpha is a primitive element it's got order 2 power m minus 1 okay n is 2 power m minus 1 so alpha power n becomes 1 so that will kind of switch back here so you would get v n minus 1 plus this so you see readily if v0 through v n minus 1 satisfies a particular parity check the shifted version will also satisfy the exact same parity check okay this happened because of various reasons okay so if you look at these equations closely it happened because each row was successive powers of alpha power i and also because n was chosen such that n minus 1 see alpha power n becomes 1 so n was chosen exactly to be the right value okay if you choose any lower value for n this will not rotate back okay so this happens very nicely because of that reason okay so i have shown this okay so i have shown cyclic property okay okay is that clear okay so now a few questions just to make sure the cyclic property sinks in okay if i now shift v0 through vn minus 1 by say some arbitrary number of positions to the right two or twice thrice four times will it again belong to the same code word yeah i mean you can simply repeat the same property suppose i shift v0 through vn minus 1 to the left by one position circularly shift will you still get it to belong to the code word yeah why because any left shift left shift is the same as a right circular shift n minus that many times okay so just by showing this simple property what i've actually shown is an arbitrary circular shift of a code word will still be a code okay so that follows just by this simple derivation okay just by this one fact all of those things follow okay such codes are said to be cyclic codes code which satisfies that property is said to be a cyclic code and therefore what i've shown here is bch codes are cyclic okay so this is very very powerful okay so this seems like a very simple uh, result but this is very very powerful and this is at the root of all the simplifications that are possible for the encoding at least for the decoding well again one can say this is the real reason but well the parity check matrix structure itself is enough for the decoding okay any questions about the cyclic property okay so let's see let's let's take one example here to illustrate i'm going to pick t equals 1 n equals 7 okay 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 so what's my parity check matrix first i have to come up with an alpha right i'm going to take alpha belonging to 
f8 being primitive okay right that's what i need to take and then what's going to be my parity check matrix 1 alpha alpha squared alpha power 4 right what else what is alpha power 8 if alpha belongs to f8 what is the order of alpha it's primitive alpha plus 7 is 1 okay remember that so, okay so alpha plus 7 is 1 and maybe maybe i'll take alpha plus 3 to be 1 plus alpha okay maybe i got it from that primitive polynomial okay so then what is what do you get here alpha plus 8 what would that be alpha really okay so alpha plus 6 i'm sorry okay oh so i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm getting i'm getting confused here apologize for that Okay, so it's alpha power 5, so I need, I need power 3 also, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm writing all this. It should be alpha power 3, alpha power 4, alpha power 5, I'm sorry for this. Alpha power 6, I don't have to write alpha power 7. Okay, so that's what I meant. Okay, I was jumping ahead. I don't have to write the second row, okay. So actually the second row also should be written, no? 1 alpha squared, alpha power 4, okay. So maybe I'll write the second row. I was always going to the second row already. So it's, that's what happens when you, when you see far into the future, okay. So what is the second row? Alpha squared. Alpha power 4, alpha power 6, alpha power 8, which is again alpha. Then you would get what? Alpha power 10, which is alpha power 3. Okay, alpha power 12, which is alpha power 5. Okay. But what do we know? I don't have to write this second row. Okay, so. Okay, I don't have to write the second row because second row for the binary case is going to be linearly independent okay only for the binary case remember if i said non binary or anything then things will change okay so i've said binary so second row doesn't have to be written okay so this need, need not be expanded okay and if you expand the first row what will you get okay so you have to figure out what the what the vector notation is right okay so let's do it i think it's it's a good exercise to do this okay let's do that find out the vector notation and then actually replace each of these columns, each of these entries by the column vector and see what the binary version is for this parity check matrix. Okay, so let's convert to binary here. Okay, so if you want to think of the table, right, alpha power 3 is, um, I said, is going to be 1 plus alpha, and alpha power 4 becomes what? 1, 1, 0, alpha power 5 is? One one one. What's alpha plus six? One zero one. Okay, so that's my vector notation. Now, if I replace this, so I'll, I'll write it as H B. Okay, so just to say it's a binary parity check matrix. Okay, I had I had one first, so I guess I say zero zero one. Okay, and then alpha, which is zero one zero. Then alpha squared one zero zero. Okay, then alpha power three zero one one. And then alpha power four one one zero. Alpha power 5, which is 1, 1, 1, then alpha power 6, which is 1, 0, 1. Okay, this is my binary parity check matrix. Okay. Okay. So now here you can easily identify this code. This is actually the 743 Hamming code. <coughs> Okay, 743 Hamming code, but you notice these non-zero vectors have been arranged in a specific order, right? You have 1, 2, 4, and then you have 3, then you have 6, then you have 7, then you have 5, 
Okay, previously we were trying to arrange it just like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 7. That's how we were trying to arrange. But this specific order gives you an advantage. What is it? What is the advantage? We came from BCH codes and somehow we got this specific order. So what does this mean? This code is actually cyclic, right? Cyclic or cyclic or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this becomes the cyclic code. Okay. That is quite surprising, right? So what does this mean? When you arrange the columns of the parity check matrix of the Hamming code in this order, then if you list all the code words, any cyclic shift of a code word is another code word. What's the question? Not by looking at this parity check matrix. How am I, how am I deciding it's a cyclic code? Because it's a BCH code. Okay, I came from BCH code. This is 743 Hamming code. I know it's a BCH code. So therefore, it is cyclic. I'm not saying just by looking at this parity check matrix. Okay, it's a little bit more difficult than that. Yes. Well, number of code words? Okay. In the total number of code words is divisible by n factorial. For what is n? n is block length. What is total number of code words? I don't understand. Number of code words of the Hamming code is 16. 16 is not divisible by 7 factorial. Right? What, what's the question? Okay. Oh no no no! It can you can have repetitions, right? It's, it's a little bit more tricky than that. Okay, so yeah, so he's thinking the way he's thinking is he's saying you have a particular code word and you have n cyclic shifts of it. Not all n will be distinct first of all. Okay, when will all n be distinct? Under what conditions on the original n bit vector will all cyclic shifts be distinct? Okay, try to derive a condition. It's a very interesting condition to derive. Okay. So, for instance, if it's periodic, if n is 10 and you have a period 2 for your sequence, right? Only 2 will be distinct. After that, it won't be distinct. Okay. So, so what can you say? So, but period 2 is important. But if the period is 3, what will happen? Okay. When you have it, you don't know. Okay. So, there is a nice condition that you can come up with. All these things are very interesting problems to work on. Okay. But anyway, for us, let's just accept that this is cyclic just because we came from the BCH code. Okay. So, you can try to come up with all the 16 code words. Yes. What's the question? Yeah, it has to be. Uh, well, actually, the second row he's pointing out in this in this HB, the second row is a cyclic shift of the first row, right? Well, shift to the shift one place to the left, right? But the third row is not. Okay, cyclic shift to the to the right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, actually, we will show eventually that that is also possible. You can always have one row which when cyclically shifted will give you a set of linearly independent things. All these things are nice. It's good that you are foreseeing all these things. Okay, So we will probably prove all these things as we go along. Maybe quickly go through. Okay, So if you are interested, you should read some more detail about these things. There are lots of interesting fact, facts about cyclic codes which I will probably skip completely in this class. Okay, There are lots of interesting questions. These things are connected, connected in a very deep way to sequences from LFSRs and all that. Very nice, very nice connections are there. Okay, All right. So let's come back to what is it that I was saying. So this is a nice example. You can do other examples, more complicated examples if you want. Let me do, let me do, uh, uh, yeah. So I think, I, I think if you just do one more example, you'll, you'll probably see. Even, even for n equals 15, you can do this. You'll again get the Hamming code, 15, 11, 3 Hamming code, 50 equals 1. And you can try all these nice examples uh, to get you some interesting information. Okay. So that's, uh, that's an example to illustrate that. Okay, so, okay, <coughs> okay, so that's one thing. The other thing, other property that I want to point out is, uh, well, it's not really a property, it's an interpretation of the BCH code, okay. So, it's useful to interpret interpret code words as polynomials. Okay, so I'm not really motivated as to why you want to do that, but it's, it's good to it's good to look at code words as polynomials. Okay, so particularly in the cyclic context, it makes a lot of sense to do that. But even otherwise, if you look at code words of the BCH codes as actually polynomials, so far we've been looking at code words as vectors, right? If you look at them as 
if you look at them as polynomials suddenly you'll see there'll be a lots of there'll be lots of simplification to the way to understand them okay you'll understand the code words much better if you think of them as polynomials as opposed to just vectors okay so far we've been thinking of them as vectors which are which are being generated by some generator matrix or which satisfy some parity check matrix right if you th start thinking of them as polynomials you'll see there's a very nice succinct wonderful description of what code words of the bch codes can be okay so let's let's try to do that so what am i saying if i have a code word c which is c0 c1 c2 so on till c n minus 1 belonging to a bch code let's say a t error correcting bch code okay once again okay t error correcting bch code okay so so moment i give you give you these definitions you should immediately be able to construct the parity check matrix right n is going to be of some 2 power m minus 1 all that information i'm just masking it i don't want to repeat keep repeating that hopefully you can you can interpolate it i'm going to think of this code word as a polynomial i'm going to think of it as some c of x which is c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus so on till c n minus 1 x power n minus 1 okay so right now this x has no meaning you might say what's the big deal in thinking of it as a polynomial okay i was perfectly happy thinking of it as a vector this x is just some variable what am i doing with this x okay now if you look at each row of the parity check matrix and the condition that the vector satisfies you will see in terms of the polynomial it has a wonderfully simple interpretation okay so look at row i row i of h is telling you c0 plus c1 times alpha power i plus c2 times alpha power i squared plus so on till c n minus 1 times alpha power i raised to the power n minus 1 equals 0 okay so you can see immediately what's the connection between polynomial and the vector okay alpha power i is the root of the polynomial c of x okay so in terms of the polynomial instead of writing out this long row 1 alpha power i alpha power 2 i at least at this point we can happily say c of alpha power i equals 0 right at least in terms of notation we have simplified instead of writing one major big expression as a parity check we can simply say c of x as a polynomial is a code word if and only if c of alpha power i is 0 for i equals 1 2 till d minus 1 okay so that's the that's a restatement of the parity check condition okay so this is an important result c of x belongs to the bch code okay again t error correcting bch code if and only if c of alpha power i equals 0 for i equals 1 2 till d minus 1 okay remember c of x is a polynomial of degree what polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus 1 okay and what else can i say about this polynomial about the coefficients of this polynomial binary. they all have to be binary okay binary coefficients okay both these things were implied in the way i defined the way i converted from vector to co polynomial okay just by that conversion i will get only polynomials of degree less than or equal to n minus 1 and i will definitely have only binary coefficients okay so so this set of polynomials polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1 with n minus 1 with binary coefficients we have already seen this before in a slightly different way right how where did we see such pol such set of polynomials when we actually constructed fields okay we were looking at polynomials similar polynomials i had a notation did i have a notation for this what what was my notation for this maybe i didn't have a notation for this okay so but for polynomials with binary coefficients i might have had a notation no? maybe i didn't have a notation f2x right f2x was my notation but i want to additionally have degree less than or equal to n minus 1 okay so keep that in mind okay so that's the that's the first thing i wanted to tell you okay so let's let's try to rephrase this a little bit differently okay so now i know alpha power i has to be a root of c of x okay so now now i will use some knowledge of polynomial division okay so if you remember i don't know if i did this formally in this class but if you have two polynomials a of x and b of x 
I can divide a of x by b of x and get a quotient and a remainder. I think I did this, right? When I did finite field construction, I can did this. I did this, but this is slightly different from that. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, I'll rephrase this. I'll say c of x belongs to the BCH code if and only if. Okay. Just because c of alpha is zero, I can say x minus alpha par i should what? Should divide c of x for i equals one to t minus one. Can I say that? Okay. Remember again, c of x should 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 come from here. It's it cannot have non-binary coefficients. Okay. So it's very important. It cannot have non-binary coefficients. It should have only binary coefficients, and it should have x minus alpha par i as a factor. Okay. So now the next step is, if you notice, x minus alpha and x minus alpha squared do not really have any common factors. They are all linear. Polynomials. Okay, so if x minus alpha divides and x minus alpha squared divides, okay, you can conclude what x minus alpha times x minus alpha squared will have to divide the same polynomial. Okay, because they don't have anything in common. Okay, it's like saying two divides a number and three divides a number, which means six will have to divide that number. There's no choice. Okay, so from there you can further simplify. Okay, c of x belongs to the BCH code if and only if. X minus alpha times x minus alpha squared, so on till x minus alpha bar what? Okay, I'll say 2t. Okay, d minus 1 or 2t divides c of x. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. But this is a curious division. Even the previous division was curious. Somebody must have asked me this question. Okay. On the right, I have a polynomial with Binary coefficients. On the left, I have a polynomial with coefficients from where? F2 par m. Okay. Of course, if you multiply and simplify, there is no reason why the left-hand side should have only binary coefficients. It will have alpha and all the all those things will be there. Okay. This is a polynomial with coefficients from F2 par m. Can I do this division? Yes. How will I do this division? Because zero and one yeah, exactly. Because I know binary numbers zero and one already belong to F2 par m. So I can imagine all my coefficients coming from F2 power m and dividing. I can always do it. Okay, I'll get a reminder. I'll get the quotient. Everything will work out fine. Okay, so this division is a little bit more confusing than your regular division, but it can be done. Okay, so let me take this example of the 743 Hamming code. Let's look at some code words. And let's illustrate this division, and we'll see how it works out. Okay, that's that's the next thing I'm going to do. Okay, the example is the 743 Hamming code. Okay, so if you remember the parity check matrix, okay, let me reproduce this to the best of my memory. One zero zero. What did I have next? Zero one one. One one zero. One 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 and one zero one. Okay. So it's easy for us to produce code words from this, right? Once I have this, I will take I will take what I'll take this to be my message part, and I'll take this to be my parity part. Okay, so once I do that, it's very easy for me to come up with code words. If I give you an arbitrary message, I can easily come up with the code words, right? The i part should correspond to. Well, this is not really the i. This is i kind of. I don't know what, but it's okay. We'll just keep it like this. It's not a big deal, right? So you can easily compute the parity part corresponding to that. Suppose I say my code message is 0011. What are the parities? What's this parity? The first parity here. Zero. Okay. What's the next parity? So I, I can see a lot of people struggling with this. This is one of the easiest computations you can do in this course. Okay. See, how do I get this first bit here? How do I get that bit? Suppose I call it P2. Okay. So P0, P1, P2. How do I get this P2? It's actually the message dot product with what? Zero, one, one, one. Right? Do you see that? So that's a quick way of doing it. Okay, you don't have to do a lot of computation. So you just put the message there and take a dot product with that. So all you have to do is take a dot product. You'll quickly get the answer. Okay, so that's a very easy computation to do. Okay, so likewise, what should this be? What will be P1? For P1, I'll use the second row. Okay, what is that? One. Okay, what about P P0? Zero. Okay, do you agree? Okay, is that clear? 
okay so what is this is my some arbitrary code word i know it's a code word okay now i'm going to convert this to c of x what is c of x now there's no alpha okay okay x plus x power 5 plus x power 6 do you agree okay already you see the advantage of the polynomial right you can just write three terms as opposed to writing a whole bunch of zeros it's a very sparse way of writing a large vector okay x plus x power 5 plus x power 6 okay so what am i saying okay let me go back and copy and paste my nice little table i had for f8 okay okay all right so that's my table okay i want you to try this division i think it's an interesting division to try what do i know first of all i know c of for, okay first let's evaluate c of alpha okay just to check that that works out what's c of alpha i know c of alpha has to be zero right c of alpha and c of alpha square have to be zero right this is t equals one which means d equals 3 2 t is 4 2 okay alpha and alpha square have to be roots of c of x try to evaluate c of alpha what do you get alpha plus alpha power 5 plus alpha power 6 that would be okay it works out to 0 right do you agree okay do this computation and the next thing is c of alpha square what is this alpha square plus alpha power 10 which is alpha power 3 and alpha power 12 which is alpha power 5 this also should evaluate to 0 okay so we have checked that okay okay so from what else did i conclude i said x plus alpha times x plus alpha square has to divide c of x first let's compute this what is this x squared plus what's the cons uh, coefficient of x alpha plus alpha squared times x plus alpha power 3 okay so maybe you want to simplify this you get x squared plus what alpha power 4 x plus alpha power 3 okay are you wondering about minus and plus yeah minus and plus is okay okay so it's all characteristic 2 remember f f8 is also a characteristic 2 field so minus alpha something same as plus alpha Okay, so minus and plus are the same in characteristic 2. There's no need to worry about that. Okay. All right. Okay, so you have to divide c of x by this polynomial. I think it's a good exercise. Please try it and convince yourself that you get zero remainder. Okay, so how would you divide it? You would put x power 6 plus x power 5 plus x here. And then you would put x squared plus alpha power 4x plus alpha power 3 here and then you would divide okay so here you would get x power 4 okay just just go about doing the division the exact same way you would do regular long division you'll see the finally the remainder will be zero okay it has to be zero of course if it's not zero then so many other things are wrong okay so it has to be zero okay is that clear okay so it works out in this case and it would work out in every other case as well okay but in this case, I want to point out one more thing. Okay. Okay. So maybe you. Okay. If you're trying to do the division, do it later in, when you have time. Okay. So you can do the division later. Come to this. But one more thing I want to point out. C of alpha is zero will immediately imply C of alpha square is also zero. Why? Yeah. See, squaring will be a. Right. Do you see that? If you have any polynomial with binary coefficients, if C of alpha is zero, C of alpha square will also be zero c of alpha power 4 will also be 0 okay so if you keep on squaring a root you will keep getting other roots just because the coefficients have are binary if the coefficients are not binary you can't do that coefficients of c of x are binary so if i keep squaring the roots i'll keep getting other roots okay so that is something so i don't even really have to check for alpha square okay it's enough if i check for 
alpha. You know, once c of alpha is zero, alpha square has to be zero. You can try alpha power four. Even that will have to be zero. Okay, there is no other way of getting around that. Okay, so you have to have all those things becoming zero. Okay, so I can give you more examples, but this is the this is what I meant by the third property. The advantage of viewing a not the advantage, the equivalence of viewing code words as polynomials and what advantage that it could give presumably. Okay, okay. So now let's go back and look at this look at this other property once again. Okay, so let me go back to this property. I said if you have a t, t error correcting uh, BCH code x plus alpha times x plus alpha square so on till x plus alpha part 2 t divides c of x. Okay, c of x is in a BCH code t error correcting. Okay, so this is what I have illustrated also. This is the general result, which is easily true. Okay, so another way of viewing this is so I always said C of X is a code word if this is satisfied. But the, what's interesting is the inverse 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 problem, right? Can I come come up with code words very quickly? Okay, if 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 I have to do that, what should I do? I have to come up with multiples of this polynomial. Okay, so this polynomial here. Okay, so the way you suppose I call this f of x. Okay. If this polynomial, if we call it f of x, any c of x is a multiple of f of x. What about the opposite of this? Is the converse is true? Is it? If, if if I have a multiple of f of x, do I have a code word of the BCH code? Can I say the opposite? Yeah, that's a problem there. Okay, but the opposite is not true. Any multiple of f of x is not a co code word because a multiple may not have binary coefficients that's the problem to say the reverse i need this additional complexity of having binary coefficients which is not just guaranteed by being a multiple okay what do i mean by saying multiple of this f of x i can multiply f of x by any polynomial with coefficients from f 2 power m okay i'll i'll still get a multiple there's no problem okay but that may not be a but may not have binary coefficients in fact f of x itself may not be a code word Okay, so going back here requires additional conditions. Okay, why? Because you need you need binary coefficients. Okay, so that's important. Okay, it's an important important point. For instance, f of x itself, as we saw in the previous example, what was f of x in the previous example? It had non-binary coefficients. So, that itself will not be a code word. Okay. So, you need two conditions to generate code words of a BCH code. First condition is, it needs to be a multiple of x plus alpha through x plus alpha part 2 t. That should be there. On top of that, it should have binary coefficients. Okay. So, one might ask, I mean, why, why will you have binary coefficients? It looks like an ugly polynomial, right? x plus alpha, x plus alpha part 2t, there are so many alphas. Will you, will you ever have um, binary coefficients for any multiple of this? this? is the first question that you might ask. Okay, So, we have to first solve that question and of course, we know it has, right? The previous example, I showed you a lot of lot of code words. For the Hamming code, how many code words do we have? We have 16 code words. Okay? So, there are a lot of code words. It's possible. They do exist and that will take us to studying polynomials with binary coefficients which have alpha as a root. Okay, so that's where the definition of minimal polynomials and all these things come in. Okay, so that's the next, uh, so next thing, notion of minimal polynomial. Okay, so you see the need for such a such a definition. Okay, I'm not just happy about any polynomial which has alpha as a root. Okay. If I only want alpha as a root for a polynomial, all I have to do is take multiples of x plus alpha. Any multiple of x plus alpha will have a will have alpha as a root. But that's not the only thing I want. I want alpha as a root. On top of that, I want binary coefficients. Okay, so that's where that's what motivates this definition. It's got it's got a lot of deeper meaning in field theory as well. This notion of minimal polynomials, but we'll see it just in this context. Okay, if you have alpha belonging to f2 power m, okay. Minimal polynomial of alpha of 
alpha is the least i'm sorry oh uh, well no i think i'll i'll keep it as a general okay so since he's saying alpha is primitive i'll say beta okay some arbitrary element of the finite field of group rm minimal polynomial of beta okay it could be primitive it could be non primitive minimal polynomial of beta is the least degree polynomial least degree binary polynomial okay what do we mean by binary polynomial polynomial with binary coefficients with alpha as a root with beta as a root okay so that's the definition for a minimal polynomial for an element of a finite field you see the relevance of this okay you'll see this will nicely tie up with coming up with code words of the bch code and this will solve this is instrumental in solving the problem of encoding of bch codes okay definition a definition of this form okay the first question you should ask is i've said it's the polynomial of least degree first of all is there any polynomial with binary coefficients which will have beta as a root that's the first question you should ask okay if there is no polynomial then of course there cannot be a polynomial of least degree okay but there's always some polynomial okay suppose if i take n equals 2 power m minus 1 what do i know about the multiplicative order of beta okay suppose i say if beta is zero then there is no real problem suppose i have beta belonging to f 2m 2 power m star okay then okay beta the order is what order of beta divides what divides n which is 2 power n minus 1 m minus 1 right so which means what beta to the power n will be what has to be 1 okay right n is a multiple of the order okay so i can write n as order times some other integer so beta per order of beta it will become 1 okay so that implies beta is the root of what x power n plus 1 and this guy is a binary polynomial okay this is f2x okay so i definitely know for every element of the finite field there is at least one polynomial with binary coefficient which has beta as the root that element as the root so now i am justified in saying what is the smallest degree polynomial which has beta as the root okay so, but the c of x will need degree of x yeah i'll come to it so this is not just saying yeah for for c of x yeah so so of course the minimal polynomial will have a degree much less than n in most cases one can show actually the maximum possible degree for the minimal polynomial is m okay so so it's actually log of this it's a very small degree okay so we'll show all those properties okay so we'll quickly look at this i think i'm going a little slower than i thought i would so i'm going to rush through so in the next few lectures i want to stop here for this lecture in the next few lectures i'm going to rush through minimal polynomials okay so this is actually not so critical i can actually i was i was actually not even planning to do it in this class but then i thought i should do it at least introduce the term okay so in the next lecture i will pretty much finish minimal polynomials i'll go through very fast and if you really want to understand a little bit more deeply i'll encourage you to read read elsewhere read read some textbooks that you can find and learn a little bit more about minimal polynomials and what they are okay so there's lots of deep connections here okay so we'll stop here for today